All right, guys, so I'm installing my leveling kit today, and I got started, and forgetting to even start the video. So, so, so what you're gonna have to do to drop this whole assembly out is you have to take the tie rod off, which is a size 18. You'll just take the nut off from underneath here, and then for the sway bar, you're gonna need a 15 millimeter wrench to hold right here to stop it from spinning, and a 16 millimeter socket or wrench or whatever you want. Take that off. Sometimes you may have to strike this to get it off. I didn't have to in this case. Before you disconnect the upper control arm and the ball joint, just go ahead and disconnect all the clips. Holding your brake on. Like so. And then I go ahead, and I don't know if this is necessary or not, but I take the brake caliper off. It's a 14 millimeter nut and a 17 millimeter nut here. So put a wrench here on and then socket, wrench, whatever you want. Hold this from spinning, take that off, and then I'll just take this off and I'll set it back here like on a jack stand so it's out of the way and then there's no tension pulling on this cord. So I'll do that real quick and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I got the brake caliper off. Got it sitting over there on a jack stand. That gives it a little bit of slack in the line because once you drop out, or once you take off the upper control arm, this is gonna drop down, and I don't want that tension on the brake lines. So next, what we need to do is take, disconnect the ball joint here, or the nut off the upper control arm of the ball joint. That's a size 21, so we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so once you get this to the point where you can turn it with your hand, stop. And then this is where you're gonna hit it with a hammer, strike it here, and knock that out. There you go, drops down. So then what you do, is you just pry down by hand. This is when you can pop out the tie rod. And then this will drop down, like so. So then from here, you're going to want to loosen up the three nuts on top of the strut. They're 15 millimeter. We'll do that now. Now I will also be uh, replacing the upper control arms. Uh, I bought some, the, the Mevo, Mevo Tech, whatever. So once I get that out, we'll actually be taking out the upper control arms in just one second. Okay, so you're gonna leave the one tight, or one hand tight. Now you're gonna come back here. Okay, so right under here at the bottom of the strut coil assembly, there's a nut right here, it's a 21 millimeter. And that one on the back side is a 24. You will need to hold that as well to stop it from spinning. All right, got it out. Now I always like to put the back side with the nut just so I don't lose it. Set it out of the way. Now we can come back up here. Take this 15 off. To get this out, you're actually gonna need a pry bar. There you go, so you only need one hand for this part. Uh, putting it back in is the difficult part. All right guys, so I apologize for the voiceover here. 
uh, my mom actually came and started talking to me as you can see your feet right there so with this you're just placing the spacer right over top of it it's only going to fit one way and then it'll, it comes with a washer, a locking washer, and then a nut. I believe it is a 10 millimeter. And that's really all there is to it. I do want to mention, though, on the three uh, bolts that are coming to the top that are going to replace your old factory ones, definitely make sure that you use Loctite, just a blue Loctite, uh, on those threads. But that's definitely not something you want coming unthreaded over time and having your whole strut assembly drop down. So she's just holding it here for me so I can go grab my wrench that I forgot because I'm awesome at doing tools. And just tightening everything down and then we'll get it put back in. Got the uh, whole strut mount back in. I really recommend having somebody help you. Right here, go on the other side of the sway bar, up underneath this bolt right here, and have them pry down. And it, I don't think I honestly could have done it by myself. Um, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna be switching out the control, or the, yeah, the upper control arm because of all the negative things I've heard about the Ram's upper control arms when you put on a leveling kit. I mean, you just feel this thing. It's just cheap compared to the new ones. So, um, there's a bolt here. It's on this side as well. Um, the inside one is a 21, as you can see. And then the outside one is an 18. And keep an eye on this when you're putting it back. So this, uh, this side nut here actually has this plate. So you want this plate on this side of the frame and you want that, this plate on that side of the frame because it's actually going to hold it when you're tightening it back down so you won't need to use a wrench to get it off, or to get it back on, you just need it to get it off. Okay. So here is the stock upper control arm that I have taken out, and here is the Mevo, Mevo Tech, whatever it's called. Um, if you're like me and you took these out to either paint them or just look at them, a heads up with these control arms, uh, they do rust if you don't put a coating on top of them. So I actually sand them down and paint them gloss black. Uh, but there is no serial number or anything on the actual control arm itself. So the easiest way to tell if it's left or right is on the stock it had this little notch here on the side um, and if you're like me and you lose everything in your life it'll just come off with a 10 millimeter wrench and then it'll go on the left side of the aftermarket one so that's how I was easiest, it was easiest for me to find out which is which um, and then also I gotta take this tape off still, but uh, you take this little boot off. Don't leave this plastic boot on. This is just to protect the bushing through shipping and everything. Okay, new control arm is in. And as mentioned previously, make sure this plate is on the front and this plate is in the back. So now you can tighten this and that little bar there is gonna hold this nut from spinning. And same with that side. So we'll get this all tightened up, move on. And make sure as well that you don't tighten these down all the way just yet. Wait until you get the ball joint back into the knuckle um, so that you can still move this freely and it's not stuck in the position that it was tightened in. All right, so next what you're gonna do, putting it back together, you're gonna put the bolt back through the bottom of the assembly here. What I'll do, what I did, just put the pry bar back where it was, pry down on a little bit, and then just hammer it to there. And then what's gonna happen, if you can see it or not, but you can see the bolt is only halfway through, or halfway through the circle. So what you're gonna have to do is come in right here with the pry bar and just pry right there and it'll go right through. 
show you guys. Oh, it slipped. And also you may need to do that as well. Just bring up the lower, just a hair. All right, it's square there. It just needs to go to the right. So, it's okay, I already checked because the nut was on this side and came through to this side, but because of the angle, I couldn't find a way with the new, because you have to turn the whole assembly 180 degrees to get it in with the strut space, or to get it in with the leveling kit. So the angle here is different now, and I could not find a way to get it in the way that it was. So this is the way I put it in on the other side. And like I said, it's underneath the lower control arm. It's not gonna come into contact with anything. It's not gonna bump this, it's below that. So that's the way I'm putting it on. And the only way I could, I could personally find a way to get it on. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up and start buttoning everything back together. All right, so we're just buttoning everything up. Um, you will need to get the jack stand and uh, raise up the lower control arm. It'll bring everything up so you can put the tie rod in and the sway arm back in. So then with the upper control arm, you're gonna wanna take your pry bar and put pressure there, or otherwise the uh, ball joint is just gonna spin. Now that's tight, I'm gonna go around. The sway bar is tight, I need to tighten up the tie rod. Put the brake back on, put the wheel back on, and we're all done. All right guys, so there is the finished product. We're gonna go ahead and get a measurement from front to rear, and then I will show you the angle of the upper control arm. So we're just about, I think it's right at 39. And now we're at 39 and 5 eighths. So the front sits a little bit higher. That's the two and a half inch kit from Supreme. Um, it must raise it quite a bit because I went with the two and a half because when I measured it, Previously, it was 39 and 36. So there was actually a three inch difference from the front to the rear. And now it's actually, it raised it over three inches. Um, there's also, I don't know if it'll pick it up on camera. There's a slight camber now on the wheels. They are tipping in a little bit now. I don't know if that's because of the new upper control arm or because of the leveling kit or what. That's the issue that uh, Ram was having is with the stock upper control arm, it was putting it at such a severe angle that people were hitting bumps and it was actually knocking the ball joint out on the upper control arm. So, got the new uppers leveling kit. That's the video today, guys. Step in here where it's not so bright. I'll get you the numbers. So these are the 
Mevotech, Mevotech, whatever, Supreme. The CMS251057 is the left. And the CMS251058 is the right. So 57 left, 58 right. If you liked the video, give the video a like. Until next time, peace.